Okay, this topic is about women and being what I call digmatized, all right? Um, I've had the pleasure of having some very close, very good female friends over several years, you know, 10 plus year friendships, just platonic, you know, never went there, uh, just friends. And kind of seeing from the woman's point of view, uh, a woman's decision making when it comes to like choosing a mate, why they choose what they choose, uh, what they decide to make something long term. And I, I never quite understood it until today. Okay, my girlfriend actually enlightened me on the topic. Uh, this is going to be a long video. I just, it's too important and too big of a topic to wrap up in two or three minutes. Uh, so over the years, these friends of mine valued my opinion, my insight. I'm very logical, uh, you know, think things through. And so over the years, they would ask me about opinions about guys they were considering dating. Now, 100% of the time, all my female friends have never gone with my suggestion. Not once. And I'm talking about, you know, between five or six female friends, you know, 30, 40 guys, you know, over 10 plus years. And every single time they go against whatever I advise, you know, so they present to me two different guys. I choose the one that I think is going to treat them the best, who's a gentleman, someone you could bring home to mom, who will cherish you, nurture you, be honest, uh, never put his hands on you. And that's never the guy they choose. So that's really kind of where I guess the saying nice guys finish last. It's true. Women, for whatever reason, don't want that guy. Um, and I figured out why. And, and like, uh, basically, the sex part of it is extremely influential to a woman. Like a guy can have good credit, great career, treat them like a princess, uh, very kind, thoughtful, charming, smart, you name it, the list goes on. But if the sex isn't what they consider mind-blowing, uh, all that is worthless to them. Absolutely, they don't care anything about it. They'll choose a guy who doesn't have a job, can't keep a job, doesn't have a driver's license, has warrants out for his arrests, uh, has trouble stringing together complete sentences, just because he's good in the bedroom. They're willing to build a future with this guy who's worthless at everything else but sex and then try to justify it in their opinion uh, and in their mind and to their friends and family. And they'll do it time and time again. Of course, these things don't work out because at some point you want something more out of life, uh, less drama, less you know issues. And then these guys get dropped, but they'll repeatedly go after the same type of guy. I mean, 10, 15, 20 years of their life, they'll spend all their prime dating years, which for a woman is, you know, between 20 and 35, uh, maybe up to 40. Uh, if a guy's looking to build a family, really between 20 and 30 is where you're likely to meet someone to build a family with. Very, un very unusual for you to meet someone in your 30s and then, you know, start a family then. Um, and so, but they'll, they'll consistently do it. I never quite understood it. And so having this conversation with my girlfriend today, she says that basically if the guy's terrible in the bed, that all those other things, they'll find reasons why they're still annoyed by certain things he does. Even if the guy's a perfect gentleman. Whereas on the flip side, if a guy's amazing in the bedroom, they'll find reasons to justify everything else. Like it's okay, he doesn't have a job, he's working towards it or... Don't be doing. He doesn't have a license. I can drop him off. Like they'll basically justify the fact that he's worthless outside of the bedroom because he is good in the bedroom, and that's enough for them to be like, I want to build a future. And so I was trying to f figure out, well, how can I make a video on that to one let guys know that are nice guys and really doing way too much for women that it may not be necessary. Just focus on your bedroom game, and that's really going to be your claim to fame as far as relationships concerned. And for women to be like, uh, you know, maybe consider some things other than that. You know, I mean, you, if you're building a family and you want a future together and you have dreams and aspirations that maybe factoring in some other things other than allowing this one area to, to play such a huge role in defining who you want as a, a long-term companion. And she says basically like uh, a woman can help it. Like she described it as like instinctual. Like once it happens, 
once they have that mind blowing eye roll back in the head sex session that it's over they can no longer really think rational and make that decision of this guy isn't someone they should be with she even told me she had an experience where she basically gave 10 years to someone who outside of the bedroom really had nothing else to offer to enhance her life but he was so good at that he he had you know access to 10 years of her life and i've seen it in my own eyes two years three years five years that situation with 10 years i knew i even had a friend who got 13 years uh in a situation where his woman worked did all the cooking did all the cleaning everything was in her name he rarely if ever had a job and yet she was with him for 13 years built a family had a couple of kids finally you know things didn't work out uh, just because at some point you snap out of it, like, wait a second, you know what I mean? I don't really have a relationship here. This is, I have a guy just that, that gives me sex and nothing else. And you snap out of it. Some women snap out of it sooner than others, but they're really digmatized, you know, a form of being hypnotized by sex alone. In their mind, they'll rationalize how they have a complete relationship when that's really all they have. Um, and so the advice for women would be that being that this is the case, and any woman that's had amazing sex would probably agree with this, the best thing they can do is before they go there sexually, make sure this guy passes the test of what you look for in a companion before you even give it to him. Like, make sure, hey, he's got a job, a car, a place to stay, goals, ambition. Make sure those things are in line. So just in case the sex is that good and now you can no longer even think clearly, and make rational decisions at least before it went there you've he's already passed your test of qualifications and for guys that are that guy that who always comes up short and does everything for a woman and for whatever reason things don't wake work out if you can't bring it in the bedroom your best course of action is to make sure she's in love with you before you guys go there just stall stall in the bedroom stuff once she's in love with you she's more inclined to accept less than a porn star performance. Um, so that would be my advice. Guys, if you suck in the bedroom, don't have sex unless she's in love. And women have a, a just a basic checklist of what you want in a mate and hold to that, no matter how much you desire this guy or want to sleep with him because you may throw away five, 10, 15 years of your life because of sex. And not allowing yourself the rationale and the time to um, avoid it. You know, you women have a, a shorter window of prime uh, desire from the, the opposite sex. Don't waste your prime years on someone that, if not for you, would be living in a homeless shelter. All right, till next time, be different.